welcome folks to this video on adding a step function to your model. And what I have is I have a model from uh, Peter Senge System Archetypes, which is a reading that will be up online before the end of the day on Monday, November 2nd. And we're going to add a change in the initial condition. I want to step it up. I'm going to start out with an initial condition that's going to be a thousand. And then at this time 10, I want to increase it. And I'm going to increase it through the use of a slider. So this is how to add a step function. If I double click on my change in the initial condition, you can see I don't have anything in here. I actually have the units, the state of the system, but I haven't included any of my variables that are inputs to this. So it's going to be the initial goal. In this case, it's going to be a plus, and then I'm going to type in step. And a step is a built-in function in Stella Architect. And these built-in functions are up here on the right. These are all the things that you can add to your model to do particular things. We're not going to use a lot of these, but you can see the step is right here. And if you go to the help menu, you can always go to the help menu and open online. Let me pull this up so it's a little closer. And if I did a search of this, I can search for the step function is what it is. It's going to be test inputs built-ins and you can see here is the step and I can go down and it will give me a description of the step. So the step is going to be the height and then the time of the change. And this is what it's looking like down here. And I will explain this in our model. So what I'm going to do is I've added the initial goal. It's plus the step needs a left parenthesis. And then I'm going to click on the change in the goal. And then it's going to be a comma. And then it's going to be time for changing the goal. So this is equivalent to the height of the change. And this could be a negative height, right? And it's going to be the time for the change in the goal. So I'll click on that. I'm going to double click on this. I'm going to go to my hashtags. I'm going to make it so it can be negative also. Let me make this minus 500. The increments are going to be of 100. And I've got this built in now. And if I simulate this, you can see I'm up here at 1,000. I'm in equilibrium is what's happening because the change in the goal is set to zero. So my actual condition is equal to my initial condition. My perceived condition is equal to my actual condition. So these equations are set up so that they are sort of um, knocking each other out. So it's, there's going to be zero change in my rates is what's happening. My net flows are basically zero. So my stocks are going to stay in the same position. So I'm in equilibrium basically is what's happening with this model. Now if I go in and let's just crank this all the way up to 500. What we see is if I look at my initial change, I'm going to right click and go to view results. You can see with my initial change, so the blue line is when it was in equilibrium, that that change in the goal, it was set to 1000, it was simply equal to my initial goal. But when I use the slider, to, uh, for the changing goal, you can see at time 10, it jumps up by 500 to 1500. It's the 1000 plus the 500. It's jumped up to 1500. It occurs at time 10. So I have knocked the system out of equilibrium. And one of the reasons we do that is so that we can observe what happens when the system is knocked out of equilibrium. And in this case, it's an oscillatory system. It's an oscillatory system because I have two balancing feedback loops that are looped or connected and they're connected through these two stocks. So this system has a tendency to oscillate. And if you think about what's going on, I'm starting out with a thousand, I'm in equilibrium, everything's good. And then I change this to 1500. 1500's in here, but it's after this time delay. So I'm simply saying it's my change in goal minus my perceived conditions divided by my adjustment time is how my actual conditions are changing. My actual conditions start to increase through the blue line, but they're ahead of the red line. And this information is used up here. In the real world, we would be looking at, you know, what's going on in the real world before we made decisions. We would be observing things. We wouldn't make them instantaneous. So if we were going along with, we're enrolling a thousand students every year at JMU, and then we started to enroll more for some reason, our perception of the enrollment would take time to adjust. We wouldn't want to assume that it was just um, you know, a permanent change when it could have been a one-time change. 
And in this case, you see there's an overshoot so that my perceived condition increases. It overshoots the goal, which is 1,500 now, right? This change in the goal is at 1,500. Uh, the actual condition overshoots it, and then it undershoots it, and then it comes into equilibrium, and this perceived goal is driving it because the perceived goals are driving this corrective action. And in the real world, we perceive things, and then we make decisions. If you're thinking about vaping, that vaping was sort of taking off, it wasn't a big deal, you know, the manufacturers of the vaping products are selling these in packs of four, I believe, and you've got tobacco and menthol, and then you have these flavors that are really attractive to youth, right? I doubt very many kids started vaping based on the idea they wanted the taste of nicotine or tobacco, but it was, um, you know, some type of flavor, vanilla flavor, whatever it was, they were using the vaping things because it was sort of cool and the flavors were okay and they started attracting kids into there. And then at a certain point, you know, government, uh, parents, school administrators, people start realizing, you know, what the heck's going on? These kids are vaping when they shouldn't be. Vaping is supposed to be to reduce smoking, not to introduce kids to vaping. And they realize that we have a problem, so they would introduce some type of corrective action, which could be the policies. I think they've increased the age from 18 to 21 in order to buy vaping products, and they've outlawed the flavors is what they've done, at least in Virginia. So that's the idea that the, um, you get a change in the actual state of the system. There's, uh, it takes time to perceive that there's some type of problem, then you take corrective actions was that point. But this video was really about this idea of adding the structure for a change. So I could have my initial condition plus the step. The change in the goal is going to have to be the same units as the initial goal, right? Because we're just adding on to them, so they have to be the same type of units. And then the time for the change. And the last thing I can do here is if I simulate one more time, I can make this go negative and we can see what happens. And it's the same behavior. It's in the opposite direction. But there's this time lag and there's this oscillation in the system. And again, if I go back and forth, you can see that this is, uh, so the B2 loop is dominant now. Now it's the B1, now it's the B2, now it's the B1. And you can see how those uh, two balancing feedback loops are sort of chasing each other because of the delays in the system. So that's it. Again, what I really want you to lock into is this change in your initial goal and know how to build this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide this model without the structure in it. You can follow the video to do this. And I will just get rid of this. And this will be up online with the model. Thanks.